Hey everyone, Miranda Patron here. So it's fall, yay! I created some little fun acrylic pours on some wood cutouts that I found at my local craft store. And these were just acrylic painting pours where you do just different techniques, but it came out so fun. And now, of course, I want to try dotting one. <laughs> So I think today what I'm going to do is have one painted black and I'm going to just start in the center of this one and see where we go with a mandala design. See how I can make that work on such a, a funky shape. So let's get started. Alright, I think for my center I'm going to use the watermelon slice from Americana Deco Art Americana. It's just a nice kind of rich pinky, pinkish <laughs> watermelon color. Um, the thing about this too is I didn't seal the wood so it is going to soak in a little bit more. So for those of you who are looking to make your dots more raised, you might want to seal your piece of wood first. Deco Art has a really nice multi-surface um, sealer that you can use and then paint over it and then varnish at the end. So, but I think I'm going to go for it and try it with just my base coat of matte black and dot away from here. This is still the watermelon slice. I'm just going a little bit bigger. Alright, next I have the dazzling metallics with some copper. go with a little bit of coral blush. Okay, I'm going to grab some of my metallic festive red. I might be regretting a little bit not sealing my wood, so you probably should go ahead and seal the the wood piece. It'll make it a little bit easier. My brush is getting caught up on little snags because it's not completely sanded down. And I'm not sure if using a dot tool 
would have issues with that, but the paint might not spread appropriately. So I'm thinking my advice would be if you're going to do the wood cutouts to seal them first. <laughs> When I was doing the pours, it didn't really matter because you're pouring so much paint on it at the time and you're not actually needing the technique of a tool to help you create your design on there. So I didn't even think about it with the pours, but as far as dotting, you can see my brush is getting hung up a little bit and snagged on the little parts. Or you could always just sand the wood down smoother. So it's a bit of a challenge, but we'll make it work here. Okay. So that was the festive red. It's one of the metallics. Okay. I'm going to use a little bit of titanium white. And I'm just going to put a little ring around our red. I think I might toss some in here as well. That one went too far up, so I am going to get rid of that one. And I'm just taking a brush and just mopping up the the white and then if I can't get it all up with the brush then I just go back over it with a um, whatever the background color is but I think we'll be okay Okay, so we're just working our way around with the white dots. And even though I'm reloading the brush, I'm not 
putting very much on. I'm just putting a little bit on the end. And then as I get to the area where I want smaller dots, I'm just letting up on the pressure. And I think most of them I ended up getting a couple dots around farther, so I'm just going to add a couple to that first one I did. I'm going to tuck a little bit of, I think it's called Santa Red here. Time for a little bit of the rich espresso from the metallics. And I'm just putting this out a little bit further so I have room to make it a larger dot. Note to sell, definitely seal wood next time. I wonder if the dotting tools would work better so that the filaments, like for my paintbrush, will, won't be snagging on it, obviously, if I'm using dotting tools. Maybe I'll give them a try. Let's see if I can find them here. Alright, so my only concern is that it's going to be a different consistency and size, but I think I can get enough on the dotting tool and then push it around here and that way I won't have problems with my paintbrush hanging up on the wood. Yep, that's working a little bit better. And I don't have very large ones or punch sets or anything like that. But um, I'm just using the largest one that I have and then pushing the paint around into a circle. Okay, I think I'm just going to finish it with my dotting tools since my paintbrushes are getting hung up on the wood here. But I have smaller ones that I can use for this. So I'll... this is my etcher. And it's just a dotting tool where I broke the end off of so it can make smaller dots. So I have some bright salmon, and I'm just going to start some rows around the espresso that we just did. And if you haven't used any of these before and you're new to dotting, um, the dotting tools you have to dip a, a bit more, keep reloading as opposed to the brush. Um, and then as you work your way around, the uh, dots will get smaller in progression because you're losing paint off the tool. So if you want them to get smaller, then you just don't reload.
and it is uh, still soaking up the paint a bit faster with the wood. So that's something too to be mindful of is your surface that you're painting on. And I can't remember if I said the color of this, but it is bright salmon. And that's the Decor Americana line still. Okay, the next color is a jack-o'-lantern orange. And this one is a little bit thinner than most of the ones that I've dealt with so far with the Americana line. So that's another thing too with your dots is just maintaining a good consistency and understanding that like this kind probably if I did larger dots it would spread a little bit more especially on a stone with a smooth surface but you can still use them just it's a work in progress with learning how to use the tools that you are using tools and the paints So lately I've been listening to a lot of different music while I paint and obviously I can't listen to pretty much any of it on the videos while I paint here um, just because of copyright issues but also because I can't talk over it very easily. But what kind of music do you guys listen to when you paint, I wonder? Let me know in the comments. It's always an interest of mine. I think it's like seeing someone else's studio too. like. Wow, they do all these creations. Where are they working out of? What does it look like in the background? And I've been trying to show that more and more too on my Patreon page. There's little clips and little videos and outtakes from bloopers that I've messed up on videos. <laughs> Not with painting usually, but even in painting I usually try to show how I fix my mistakes because that was always something for some reason in my mind I wanted to learn how to not scrap a project. Especially when I was first starting out because I did a lot of things in directions I didn't mean to go. But also, you know, the clips and stuff are super fun to post and just hear your thoughts about it because I really just can be real at this point especially on video so tonight's clip I did a shot of how I'm painting in my pajamas this evening <laughs> but that's why I only show my hands on the videos right you don't want to see the rest we got pajama painting and who knows what's going on in the background in my household Messy little baby hulks running around. Actually, the baby is down early tonight, so this is how I get to be with all of you this evening. My awesome hubby got him down early. Plus, I think it's been a busy week. I don't know about you all, but this week, I was just telling somebody how it felt like it was all Mondays. <laughs> All right, so that was the jack-o'-lantern orange. All right, so the next lighter shade that I picked out here um, 
as coral, just straight up coral. Not the bright coral, not the coral blush. It's just the straight coral and it's a little bit lighter. And then after that, I'm gonna do peaches and cream, I think, cause it's another few shades lighter than this one. I think in the last video that I did, I, I don't know, there was something in the air that was just bothering me that day, and a lot of you wrote me asking how I was feeling, and I really appreciate that. You guys are super sweet, and I'm feeling fine. It was just a weird allergy, but it's amazing how you guys can hear that <laughs> coming through on the video, but I really do appreciate all the thoughts and comments, and you guys are just awesome. I love this art community. So I was able to get some new software that allows me to do a few editing thanks to my a few different editing things um, like the voiceover and whatnot. So I'm gonna be testing those out shortly. That also is a special thank you to those of you who have donated money through Patreon and subscribe to that community and then also to PayPal. I really appreciate that. I also have been speaking with a couple other artists to talk about doing some collaborations live and online. So those are in the works as well. We're just trying to find some software that will allow us to do kind of like a split screen. So if any of you have ideas on that, I'd be happy to listen to them. Uh, I'm totally talking about other things this evening instead of the painting, but I have had a lot on my mind and lots of creative ideas running through my head, ready to make, and not enough time to make them. <laughs> but that's life, right? So, also I had a huge cup of coffee before I started the video tonight, so I might be a little more wired than usual. Hope that doesn't interfere with the calm voice that I hopefully usually have. But sometimes we gotta be energetic and enjoy what we're doing too, I think, right? My kids call me a spaz sometimes. I don't know if I should take that to heart. <laughs> I assume they mean it lovingly. Ooh, it is pouring out tonight. Alright, so coral, then peaches and cream. And I think actually I want to just do one larger one at the top, so I'm going to use the other end of my stylus. Just center it on each of these at the top. just to kind of change it up a little and kind of give a finality to this section of the pattern. Oh, 
Can I sneak one in here? Yep. I can. Okay. Now we'll do little guys all down around, but it kind of also makes it look like you have tiny little bit like a flower petal. So it comes to a point at the top because we did that larger dot. I like that decorative look. So lately I've been seeing a lot more people stopping by and writing me messages in other languages, which is awesome and super exciting because I love languages. I actually was in the Air Force and that was where I met my husband. We were both linguists. I speak Korean, I did for the military, and then he was in Spanish. And we just, I love learning languages. So if you're stopping by tonight and you're from another country, and even if it's not, if it's somewhere where you speak English, Britain, UK, anywhere else, Ireland, anywhere else that you're stopping by from, please shoot me a little comment and let me know where you're saying hi from. I'd love to hear from all the different people who are checking in. And then of course too, if you're if you have other things on your mind and you want to comment, please feel free. I'm thinking on doing some of these live as well. So what do you think about that? The only thing with going live is I can't pause in between <laughs> to do the... Um, I kind of wait as I do rounds. I pause so that I don't have dots bleeding into one another. But we could always answer questions and do like a Q&A as paint is drying. That way we're not sitting there watching paint dry and we can make it a fruitful discussion as well. So what do y'all think about that? It's so funny, I have to confess this. When I just asked, what do you think about that? I've been doing talk to text so much lately, I almost said, what do you think about that question mark? Talk to text really doesn't like me. I'm always messing up words and sending it when I shouldn't be sending some things. <laughs> Says the wrong things or autocorrects to something I didn't mean to say, but that's exactly what I was just thinking. I'm probably the only one that does that, right? I did that in the car a couple weeks ago. My daughter, I don't even remember what I asked her. I just said blah 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 question mark and she looked at me she's 15 of course everything I do is silly because she's a teenager <laughs> she just looked at me with crazy eyes like what are you talking about mom I don't know I'm talking to texting you in real life <laughs> alright so these um, peaches and cream ones here we go one more left. But you can see like the larger one at the top too gives you that kind of peak point on the design. I think definitely it was a good call switching to dotting tools for the wood here. It is going a lot smoother. <laughs> so I apologize for that with the brush catching up so much. Like I said, note to self, definitely seal it next time if I want to use brushes. Because you can see even on the outer part here, there's a lot of texture to the wood. Alright, that's coming out so nice. I'm so excited. I love fall colors. It just really has become my favorite season. It's one of the good things about living in Ohio. And it's funny because I'm a New England girl originally and I never ever in a million years would have thought about moving to Ohio. In fact, for some reason growing up, it didn't have a lot of good connotations in my mind of what it was like. But now I'm here and Lake Erie's beautiful where we are and my husband's family's all out here, so it's 
it's pretty enjoyable. We've made wonderful friends, and our family is really settled in, so... I'm talking and thinking about what I want to do next because we're going to start getting into <clears throat> areas where the design is going to start getting cut off, which is fine. I was, that was my plan to just kind of pretend like we just cut this leaf out of a pretty mandala. So I just kind of had to think about how to navigate it. You know, as always, to kind of check to make sure you can fit as much as you can where you're going to go on your design. So. Okay, so I think it's doing a nice transition already, kind of from the darker reds to oranges, and then maybe we'll make it to the yellows at the end to just kind of have a nice bright finish. So I think I'm going to continue in this zone with the oranges and corals for a bit. And I think I'm going to tuck in a few swipes to just kind of delineate our multiple ombre dots here from where we're going to start the new part. So I'm going to go, I'm thinking jack-o'-lantern just because it's such a brighter orange than the rest. I'm, I'm debating whether or not this is too much paint. I don't usually do swipes with the dotting tool so I gotta decide how long it's gonna go so I do practice that if you're gonna do your tools just get a piece of paper or even I do it on my palette just to see how long the paint is gonna drag out so that you can decide if it's gonna fit on your design ahead of time So that's all I'm doing here off to the side is practicing to see if it's too much paint. And I think it is too big. So I'm going to use the etcher end because it holds way less paint. And I want a more delicate comma stroke on there. Or drop dot drag, whatever you want to call it. And I'm not going to go up to the point that we made. I'm just going to start right on the side of it. I'll see. And this is... A little bit thinner the paint, so it's going to spread a little bit. I think that works actually. Looks a little more delicate and then as you run out of paint on this one it actually fades a little bit, which I like. So I'm actually having to double load a couple of these. That's all I'm doing when I start it and then start it over again. Or you can drag from the paint that you already have down. But like I said, this one's a little bit thinner than the other paints. So that's kind of temperamental. And I also don't want it too thin so that it looks like too much black is showing through. So I'm just grabbing a little bit more paint instead of just doing a double drag on the paint that's already down. and this one is getting tripped up a little on the wood grain. We'll make it work.
Alright, so see here too I'm ending on my leaf, so it's going to be a much shorter stroke. So i got to use probably just one dip and just kind of do the faux, like it ends there type look. Just pretend that the leaf design went farther on, you know. Oh, still not enough paint on this one. Here we go. There. So it kind of separates from where we can do the rest of our design here. I think I'm going to toss a couple copper dots in here. I switched up to a larger size stylus just so I can make a bigger dot with the copper. Okay, so I have um, spicy mustard next, and I think I'm going to try to do some large, that one's going to be a little difficult. Okay, so I'm just going around my design to make sure, see what it's going to look like if I do a large, oh, I don't know what that is, if I do a large dot of mustard. On each of these. So I think this one here and this one we're not going to get to put anything because we're at the end of the design there. But this one is going to be the most challenging. So let's do the other ones first. And then you just kind of get into the groove of how the color you've switched to is working, or I need to anyway, because like I said, some of them are a little bit of a different consistency and we're working on the wood, so it's spreading different. I'm seeing that and this one looks a little smaller than the rest. And while it's still wet you can make them a little bigger just by pushing the color out a little farther on your dot. Alright, so in this one we're skipping, because it would have been a dot right here. I'm saying that for my benefit as well. There you go. I really like how this mustard is kind of a subdued yellow, so it's more kind of mazy. Not your bright sunshine, more of a calmer, dull, darker yellow. Alright, so now I also have to see how I do this with, <laughs> with a dotting tool. So I'm not always using the dotting tool. So, um, 
this is where we line it up. And I don't want it to run too far over the edge, so I haven't loaded it too much, but I'm going to just kind of sketch in about the size of where it would go. And then the edge on this side just needs a little push out to make it a little more round. And then I'm going to stop playing with it because then it's going to get too big. <laughs> but So you just kind of have to imagine that you were going to put it all the way and draw the part on, usually with the, the brushes, but this worked pretty well as well. So you just kind of draw it in a circle, draw your dot. Okay, so continuing on in the ombre theme from dark to light, I think I'm going to use some blended gold here and then and we'll do little dots around our spicy mustard that we just did with the small 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 dotting tool so splendid gold and I'm going to start with the most difficult one that we just finished anyway I'm just going to start at the top stay in line with my other dots here and then just work my way down around the side that I have available to paint upon like that and usually like once you get the first row down of, of a difficult design area it it starts to flow a little easier much on my tool so I'm just gonna share some off to the side there you'll get to a point where you start to get a feel you'll know that the next dot's gonna be too big <laughs> so I just drop it off on my palette or at the next dot that I have to do just so I don't root ruin it and make a dot too big next to the one that I first started. And sometimes too if you run out too fast you can steal from the other dots that you have there that they're if they're wet. It's just a mini time saver thing too so you don't have to keep going back to your palette load back and forth back and forth so you can steal from the paint that you already have available on your piece. Share. Share is a better word than steal. <laughs> so again, I'm using the Splendid Gold. Next one I think I have is I can either go back to the spicy mustard, which I'm debating because I really kind of like this color, um, or cadmium yellow. I think is the next darker one that I have. Yeah, cadmium yellow, and that's a little bit brighter. So that's what I'm debating in my mind. I think I am gonna go one round of spicy mustard. And then we'll do the cadmium yellow. And again, you're just doing the area that's available 
with the same size dots that would go there if, even if it wasn't. So if I was way down here, then I would have to start with a smaller dot. You know, say the leaf cut off here instead, you would just start with a smaller dot. Because it's not going to be the big dot that you start at the top of your section with. That one spot doesn't want paint on it. There we go. So you can see here too, as we get farther out on the design, I'll have to make some adjustments because the design ends. <laughs> the leaf ends. Our mandala's not gonna end. It's just we want it to look like it was cut. black in my light paints. Okay, so next I believe I said cadmium yellow. There we go. Okay. And see here, I'm gonna have to do like I said. That would be the bigger dot, but I'm only gonna get partial of that bigger dot because um, if I would keep the symmetry it goes in place where the edge of the leaf is. I'm talking too much and not dotting, it's drying up on my tool. <laughs> Here we go. My parents today were telling me they've already hit peak leaf season. Up by them, they're up in super northern Vermont on the border of Canada. And my mom's been sending me tons of pictures for inspiration because they have amazing color. They live, excuse me, on 130 acres <clears throat> of land up in Vermont. And they have tons of maple trees because they do maple sugaring making syrup on the land and it's interesting the different types of maples have different colors to them and there's a whole chemistry to how much sun and how they lose the chlorophyll and where it hits and how much rain there's just a whole amazing science to it that is pretty cool So again, we're on the edge here, and here I had to do like a little half a dot. But that's what you're going to have to do when you're doing the any shapes that are not a perfect circle. Just like the heart that we've done in the past.
I'm just measuring with my eyeball to see if this is actually out as far as the yellow would be. And another way you can do this is you take your compass, if I can find mine, and if you just kind of want to trace the idea of a line, so I measure it right here to where my yellow comes out, and then so here would be the yellow, here would be the yellow, and you can measure in between your dots too. So, and see this one you can actually see is not out as far as the other yellow is because I haven't done the um, cadmium yet. But there you see they all meet about the same area. So if you wanted to, you could draw your guidelines like that too. So if you got out this far on your design, which I might have to do as we go, just to kind of see where they hit so that you can keep the design symmetrical on your on your um, piece. <laughs> All right, so back to the cadmium yellow here. One of the things I was thinking about earlier too, because I was talking about Ohio and then talking about people in other countries, you take for granted what you have where you are you know, if you're somewhere where it's sunny all the time and it's just gorgeous near the water, and that would be amazing as well. Or here in Ohio, you know, we have the four seasons. Or people joke that we only have two seasons, you know, summer and crazy winter, but beach and shoveling. But it's not. It's, it's four seasons, technically, just like New England was, where I'm from. So I wonder where it's... You know where everyone else is from what it's like for you I just assume oh isn't what's your favorite season well some places probably don't have all the seasons when we lived in Monterey for the military Monterey California it was absolutely beautiful stayed around 70 and then like at noon every day we'd have a passing shower and then it would be nice the rest of the day I mean we'd have some fog because you're out in that area along the ocean, but it really was beautiful. And then I did, I missed the four seasons. <laughs> right, I think now I'm going to switch to Sunny Day. And I think I am going to try to squeeze another ring around these. And here, you can see, I'm not going to get to put the sunny day, really, because I have to start here. And that other part would be off, off the leaf. So you just got to kind of take a peek at it before you start putting your paint down to make your plan of attack. And this one too, we're going to be off the edge, so I'm going to end off the edge here, but then if you notice down here, it comes back into the field of view. So I have to kind of gauge how much paint I need on the tool and how little the dots would be when I get to the bottom here. See, they're pretty small. So I would just drop some paint off on my palette, I think, for this one and then just do a couple of the smaller dots down there to oh you know what I didn't do it with this one with the cadmium which now I'm gonna have to go over that with the cadmium which is alright but you see that way too is how I just went right over it really quick they're not dry but 
that way you can kind of see how you're going and progressing with your colors. Alright, so I went over it with my cadmium. And then I'm going to, what, what am I on? <laughs> Sunny day. So I need to drop some off because I had too much. Or you can just grab a couple from the ones that you have here. A little bit. Okay, sunny day. So this one would be off. This one would, be, would not be on. Barely. And then that would be our first real dot. barely would be on there barely and then Pretend that one, pretend this one, this is the first one you're on. So I have too much, so I'm going to drop off some of the mounts there. Start smaller here, and work my way down and around. And let the dots, or paint run out on the dotting tool. There's a little bit of a rough spot here on the wood that I'm just trying to navigate. This is turning out actually way better than I anticipated in my mind when I thought about doing the fall colors on the leaf. <laughs> Kind of exciting. I haven't used a lot of these um, yellows yet, so I was looking forward to having them on this piece. I'm switching over to more of the Americanas now as opposed to the Crafters acrylics. And there's a great variety. Cool. All right. Okay, so I think to kind of keep the contrast that we have going, I'm going to do some of the darker colors back in here again. I might even grab some of the red and start to bring it out to the edge of the piece here. Let's see, maybe we'll go with... I like the Santa red. I think it'll look good in contrast with the spicy mustard. So I think I'm going to go back to that here. And I'll just do a dot on either side of the coppers. And this I should have checked all the way around before I did it. I was in a rush because I'm so excited about this. <laughs> but it's going to fit a little bit differently in a couple of these spots. These reds are not going to be as spot on as the first. Like this one here definitely is going to be up a little higher. And this one is going to be off our leaf a bit, so I think it worked out okay, though. Okay, so I'm just debating now if I want to, I think I want to use the um, Splendid Gold. And we'll do some larger 
thoughts above. Did I pour this one? Oh, I didn't. I think, yeah. So we're going to use the Splendid Gold above the red. Some slightly larger. Anyway, okay. I lost my train of thought. My daughter come in. <laughs> came in. All right, Splendid Gold above the red for the larger dotting tool, I think. That's not going to work. Okay. And this one I'm just going to push off to the side a little bit because I did get a little off center. I'll just kind of fill that in a little. And this one is coming down onto my stem a little bit, so I just have to kind of draw it in there. It's a little bit farther over. I'm debating putting some here. I think it would show. I'm just going to touch it right there, like an illusion of it being there. Okay. I absolutely love it when you walk away from a piece and then come back to it because it's like seeing it a whole new one. Just sang my daughter to sleep. Well, sang to her and tucked her in. But now coming back to this, I'm actually pretty excited about this design. It's really kind of nice. The only thing I'm thinking is that the yellow, if I continue on with yellow, it's going to be too overpowering. So I want to keep tucking in to bring out the colors from the center. And then maybe finish these off with some white, just to kind of give it that last pop. Alright, so I think I'm going to go with a little bit of the Rich Espresso on either side of the Splendid Gold that we just put down. Like that. And this one probably would barely fit right here. That looks like I splattered a little yellow there, so I'll probably have to go over that with some of my black round back. My black round back, yes. <laughs> my back round black Ooh. glad I didn't stick that gob down sometimes the metallics you know they're like putting they get that skin on the top and I almost just grabbed some and tossed it on there. I don't have a wet paper towel on my paints tonight. I probably should have thought about doing that. There we go. Okay, let's see. I think I'm going back to the blush coral. And then 
just gonna go around these ones like that to tuck them in. And this way too, you're bringing out your oranges from the center of your design. They look like little eyebrows. <laughs> All right, so this one is a little. I guess I'd fit one there, and then barely. And I realize too they're not all the same amount of dots, so your design gets sized differently sometimes and you just gotta make the best. And personally I'm not gonna go counting dots to see if somebody did the same exact amount of dots all the way around, so no one's gonna notice. It still looks nice on your design. I mean, sometimes if it's completely out of order and just looks totally awry, then I might add other things into it to kind of bring the design together a little more. But for the most part, you know, if I have seven here, nine there, around these little, little guys, it's not the end of the world. And you're up close and personal with your piece. Sometimes we need to walk away and come back. Go sing to your kids. <laughs> but definitely that's good advice, I think, overall, too, because even just walking away and coming back, then you can look at your piece with fresh eyes and see different details you might want to do, different design elements. Okay, I think I'm going to go a little bit darker, the coral. And do another, just follow those in again. And just kind of bulk up this idea, this design here a little more. Bulk it up, beef it up. <laughs> Advance it a little more. I don't know, I need a thesaurus tonight, I think. It's amazing how, even just different areas where you live, how you use different words for different things. Back home in New England, I, we almost never used the word sucker because my mom was not a big fan of that word. But it usually meant, you know, I don't know, it wasn't a nice term to call somebody. <laughs> so then I came out here to Ohio, and suckers are lollipops. And I was at the bank, and this woman saw my daughter in the back seat, the teller, and she's blah 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 and I'm looking for my stuff and she says sucker and I said excuse me <laughs> and she holds up the um, little dum dum lollipops yeah she means lollipop <laughs> it was a little embarrassing and awkward and there's been some times when things like that have happened along the way and you don't think about it unless you travel a lot if you were born and raised in an area and you didn't have a lot of interaction with other people, then you don't think about it, but or people from other areas, really. But it's always interesting to me to hear what people call different things. I think out here, too, yeah, they call um, soda pop. Everything's pop, pop. But then when we were stationed down south, they called everything Coke. 
And I said, no, I want, you know, like a Sprite. No, you want a Coke? You want Sprite Coke? I'm like, what? I got so confused. <laughs> what are we talking about? The clear soda? It's like lemon lime? Yeah, yeah, Sprite Coke. Yeah, this is looking kind of nice and dainty, and I think I'm actually going to continue on and do some red in there, too. We'll throw some of that Santa red on around around these ones as well. It's funny, too, the accents. I know a couple of you have said I don't, I don't sound like I'm from... New England anymore. Some of you have said I actually sound like I'm from the Midwest, which is interesting. Must be losing my accent. But there's so many awesome accents. I have a lovely friend named Elaine from the UK who sent me a video on Instagram of her accent, which I just, I love hearing them. I love languages. I love accents. I think it's just such a fun, fun way to share different parts of ourselves. And art, of course. <laughs> the primary objective here. I don't know why I felt like I was being too silent tonight, so now you guys are all getting an earful. Which, by the way, if you don't want to listen, you can always mute it. <laughs> Or you can talk back to me in the comments. That would be awesome. Alright, I'm just trying to get it to a point where I have only a little bit on because I that took one or two in there. And this is that rough section, so these dots aren't going to look the best. Not the roundest, but they still got to go in there because they have to do their part with this design. It's super exciting. I wasn't sure what to do with this part, but I'm kind of glad I did that. Okay. It's fun. Fun, fun, fun. Now I think for a little more fun, let's uh, use a color that we have. I'm going to throw some brown on there. I have this honey brown that I think will contrast with the red nicely, but also tie in the... Uh, the yellows. And we'll do a big old dot right here. And I kind of like it with some of the black showing too, so that you have that idea of space around it, but I'm going to have to debate that in my head for a minute here. Do I want to go all the way to the edge? I'm going to go around with that sunny, bright yellow and just do a little one above the browns, the honey brown, there isn't one there, and that one I can't get, this one is a little rough, okay, and now I'm going to grab some titanium white here. And just go around those kind of delicately. 
tiny, tiny, tiny dots. If I do a couple rounds, my off screen. Yeah, sorry. I get going. Crowd myself in. <laughs> Here we go. So I think I'm going to do just kind of like a out and around shape here. That guy's a little off kilter, huh? I'll have to get rid of him, I think, and come back to that. That's why I turn my stuff, and I didn't when I went around with those white eyes, I think. That way, too, I know where I'm lining it up. I have to turn what I'm working on to the side that faces me, because that's how I keep my symmetry. And now I'm making rhymes. <laughs> Fuzzy hair. Okay, so Getting rid of this guy because he's completely off kilter. And it was already starting to dry, so. Gone. And that one was the sunny day. I went around with. And then hopefully, let's see if this is wet. They might spread a little bit more than I want them to, but. There we go.
And the more I look at this, the more I really think that I like the black space there. I think I'm going to keep the black space, but I think I need to kind of create a little more of a sturdy section here. Just put a couple of the titanium whites around our feathery little towers that we created here. And then I am going to be done. So now too, if you wanted to add any top dots or any fill in dots, just you know, make sure your space is enough all the way around because some of these I would have put more in, but this one is up higher. I got a little closer on some of them than others, but really you can just make it your own after that too. Different colors on top. And but I hope you liked this. I really enjoyed this. I did a lot more thinking on this because it's a little harder of a structure to paint on, so it's a little bit longer of a video, so I hope that's all right with you all, but as always, feel free to comment, let me know what you like, don't like, constructive criticism, answer any of the questions that I threw out there tonight, <laughs> where are you from, etc. Um, I'm also on Instagram and Facebook, and if you are looking to get these videos before anyone else, you can become a part of my Patreon community and... Um, Subscribe to that on my patreon.com forward slash Miranda Patron. Alright, I enjoyed doing this this evening. I am just going to let it dry now for 24 hours and put it in line for a varnish. And I'll probably use something really thick because it is the wood and it will need something to kind of cover the grain. Alright, I hope you all have a great night, and I look forward to seeing you in the future and interacting with you in the comments. Thanks again for watching. Happy painting!